Bonjour tout le monde, vous écoutez La Voix des guerriers. La prochaine entrevue, c'est avec Bruno Fernandez. Vous ne connaissez pas Bruno Fernandez? Il wow, faut le connaître, parce que c'est euh, un, un prof de jujitsu brésilien fort réputé, qui est à Montréal depuis quelques années, qui vient d'ouvrir sa propre école. C'est entre autres euh, euh, le coach de Jiu de Georges Saint-Pierre, c'est lui qui lui a remis sa ceinture noire. Et pour faire cette entrevue-là, on a eu le droit d'avoir, non pas Frédéric Lhomme Nouvelle Garcia, mais bien The Newsman Garcia, puisque M. Fernandez s'exprime en anglais. Et euh, c'est l'une des raisons pour lesquelles, euh, évidemment, vous n'allez pas euh, m'entendre. Alors, euh, c'est peut-être une bonne nouvelle pour vous. C'est Fred The Newsman qui réalise l'entrevue avec Bruno Fernandez. Et comme d'habitude pour nos jours qui s'en viennent jusqu'au 21 février et les quelques jours qui ont précédé, on vous pose une question. Si vous, lui répo si vous y répondez et que vous faites parvenir votre réponse à radio à commercial et même à nouvelle.com, vous courez la chance de remporter une paire de billets pour la MFL qui aura lieu le 27 février prochain au complexe sportif Claude Robillard. Une carte forte, intéressante qui va, euh, que la MFL vous offre cette soirée-là avec des David Loiseau, Steve Bossé, Bruno Osier, Tom Murphy, Marvin Eastman, un vétéran du UFC et plusieurs autres jeunes combattants qui, euh, on en est persuadé, vont vous égayer cette soirée du 27 février prochain. La question est toute simple et c'est le newsman qui vous la pose. Oui, ben on veut savoir, M. Fernandez, il a ouvert son école, mais la date d'ouverture officielle, on la mentionne dans l'entrevue. Alors, on veut juste savoir à quelle date que son école de jiu-jitsu va ouvrir officiellement. Ben, tout ça, c'est merveilleux. On vous rappelle, vous faites parvenir votre réponse à radio, à commercial et même à nouvelle.com. Bonne entrevue. Oui, bonjour. Ici La Voix des guerriers, Frédéric Garcia avec Ken Wong. On reçoit euh, comme invité aujourd'hui Bruno Fernandez, un entraîneur de jiu-jitsu qui est en train d'ouvrir une école à Montréal ou qui a déjà ouvert son école à Montréal. On va lui demander euh, tout de suite en ce moment. Euh, hi Bruno, how, how are you? Okay, good, yeah. We're good, we're good. Uh, we heard that you're opening a jiu-jitsu school in Montreal. Yeah, that's true. Like, uh, actually, uh, we're good. Uh, we opened doors on uh, in the beginning of January, so we we just uh, had a first uh, month. Uh, everything's going well so far. Around uh, what neighborhood is it in Montreal? It's uh, it's on Peel Street, but it's a bit uh, it's not exactly downtown, so it's uh, all the way in Peel and Wellington, so about like five blocks uh, uh, walking uh, south of the Bell Center. And uh, this school, what is the goal for you through this school? Is it to to bring a, a, an elite um, a, an elite jiu-jitsu school to Montreal, or is it more to try to reach the community and try to reach as more as many people as possible? Uh, I believe both. Yeah, like uh, we, I think that by bringing a, a high quality uh, school of jiu-jitsu uh, to Montreal, uh, I, I would be able to 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 build like. A, fighters that uh, uh, can compete in any event in the world. And uh, how do you like Montreal? Have uh, How many years have you been in Montreal? Well, I've been in Cannes for quite some time. Like I came here in 2005 and uh, I lived for, in Montreal for about three years. Uh, but then I had to spend a year in Toronto and then uh, uh, last year I came back. So in total I've been in Cannes for five years. And, and I like Montreal quite a lot. <laughs> anything special made you want to To, to stay here and open your school in Montreal uh, than another place? Is there something special that uh, attracted you to Montreal? Oh, yeah, like uh, Montreal is the first city I lived here in Canada. And then uh, I had the chance to visit some other cities here, but uh, I wouldn't change uh, Montreal for any of those. Like, uh, I really uh, feel uh, like at home here. Maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about your background in jiu-jitsu. Uh, at what age you started, under uh, what coach, and uh, how, how your progression went through the years. Yeah, I started about 
uh, 20, 21 years ago, I was uh, 11, 11 years old in Rio, and then uh, my father had some friends that were already uh, black, black belts at uh, Carson Racing. At that time, Jiu Jitsu was not even popular in, in, in Brazil, but I had the, the opportunity to start at that tender age. And then uh, I, I started at Carson, uh, I used to do kids' class, I stayed there until I was like 16 or so, and then my family moved, and uh, I, I switched to, to Grace Bar. And that was when I was 16 years old, and I've been with them ever since. And, and in competition, what type of competition have you uh, participated in? Oh, like a, when I was competing, like I would fight pretty much everything, you know, from small local tournaments like the World Championship. Uh, I always believe that in order to be a good competitor, you, you, you got to uh, uh, continue to compete and then get used to that uh, journey rush. So I competed in pretty much every tournament, like I earned like uh, four uh, World Championships, a couple of Pan American uh, Championships, Nationals, uh, State and my super fights, and, uh, I had a good, some good years. <laughs> so uh, we know that uh, you train also Georges St. Pierre, the, our uh, great champion here in the, in Quebec. Uh, how did you get in contact with George? Well, uh, actually, uh, George was uh, one of my first students here in Montreal. You know, like uh, I all started pretty much with him. Like. Uh, him and some other fighters at TriStar I used to go to, to New York to train with my friend at Hands of Grace Academy. And then like, uh, they kind of recommended uh, uh, me to them because I was like, pretty much uh, living, living here close to, to them. And that's then we started like a pretty small group, you know, like uh, three or four people, but then uh, I started to grow and, 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 and lucky now I would be able to start a gym on my own. And, and when you saw George St. Pierre for the first time, did you know that he was a, a special athlete? That he was a uh, he had some giving uh, some some skills that he had at birth almost. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean George is the perfect like the perfect athlete. You know, like he's, when I when I started training with him, like I believe he had just uh, won uh, BJ, so he, he wasn't a, a champion yet, but. Uh, What's 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 unique about him is his determination and uh, uh, how he pay attention to details and uh, always wants to become uh, a better fighter. And other than George Saint Pierre, who would be some of the fighters you've trained that uh, that are some of your favorites? Oh, I had a chance to train uh, some other UFC fighters that are, that are Montrealers, like Dave uh, Loiseau and uh, uh, Jonathan Goulet, and uh, uh, I also uh, uh, quite glad to be teaching some of the uh, rising local stars like Mike Ricci, that's also a good friend of mine, and then uh, we have some, some people from, from outside, from the uh, UK that uh, are now spending some time at our camp, uh, Tom Watson that's fighting pretty soon. If we go back a little bit to your school, uh as of yet, how many students do you have in your school? Well, we just started, right? Like, so uh, uh, we have we are about uh, 30, 30 people. But uh, I mean, right now in the beginning, you know, like I better than uh, having uh, a lot of students. You know, like I, I'm 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 quite uh, pleased, like, to be able to have formed. Uh, quite a, a pleasant uh, group of people, you know, so it's a, it's a joy for me to go to gym and teach. And is it a, it's from every skill level, I guess, that go to your school? You got some uh, people that are starting and some people that are m more experienced? Yeah, like, uh, so most of the guys that I had been trained before, like, uh, uh, are still trained with me, you know, like, and they're, they're quite experienced. But uh, I do have a separate classes for beginners, and then uh, they're coming. Like uh, right now, I must say that my beginner classes it's uh, it's uh, busier than the advanced ones. And, and when you teach to guys that do MMA, do you do you t teach them with a with a gi on, or do you uh, practice without the gi? Uh, 
that depends. You know, like when I teach the GH3, you know, like I teach the same one uh, uh, regardless of uh, uh, the guys in the MIFI fire or not. You know, like uh, I believe that learning the pure GH3 is the key, you know, to become a better fighter on the ground. But uh, when it gets close to their fights, sometimes you take the gear off, you know, put the gloves on to get them uh, more used to the uh, the conditions that they're going to face uh, when they fight. Uh, do you do you like the MMA or are you more of a traditional uh, martial artist that prefer the the traditional arts? Well, no, I got, I do like MMA. You know, like it's just not for me. So I I, I love to watch, I love to teach, but uh, <laughs> I think I'm too old for that. But 